I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 92, 64 de Hakane Tomagachi Mina de Tomagachi World. Released exclusively in Japan in 1997, this game was developed by Hudson Soft and published by Bandai. Still here we are in the land of Japan. This time we've got a franchise that's familiar to many of you, Tamagotchi. These things were unbelievably popular pretty much everywhere, but at a minimum I remember them being all over the place in the US when I was a kid. Heck, I even think I had one and it was like a Pikachu variant or something. I don't even know why I had it. Now, if you know about Tamagotchi, you may be thinking, oh geez, is this game just going to be taking care of a pet like that hamster game from before? Turns out there's a lot more to this than that. If you want to see what it's all about, watch the video to learn what it has to offer. Let's get into it. Also, quick shout out to Who Was Phone on GameFAQs for writing translation guides for most of these Japanese titles. They've been incredibly helpful throughout this challenge. Link in the description. When you boot the game up, there's a very odd cutscene with three Tamagotchis in a spaceship. They notice they are near the Earth and they're wondering if they should check it out. Unfortunately, there's only one rice ball left and one of them eats it all to themselves. This causes a big fight on board the ship and they begin spiraling out of control towards Earth. We then see this guy named Dr. Bonzo who is sad his life hasn't turned around after he discovered the existence of Tamagotchi. Just when he thinks he's hit rock bottom, he gets hit in the back of the head by a flying saucer. It's those darn Tamagotchis causing trouble again. But this crash inspires Dr. Bonzo. He decides to build a Tamagotchi house where up to four people can care for a Tamagotchi at once. So for the gameplay, it's kind of a nice surprise. It's a full on party board game. In fact, you might recognize the devs Hudson Soft. A year after this game was released, they went on to release the legendary game Mario Party. So this game is basically a precursor or a test run you could call it for that game. When you start your turn you roll a die that is valued from 1 to 6. Whatever it lands on is the amount of spaces you move on the board. Here I landed on a power plus space. I'm the blue player by the way. This gave my Tamagotchi power points indicated by the star on the bottom of the UI at the top. After moving you can do an action to care for your Tamagotchi. The fork and knife are to feed it, the baseball bat is to play with it, the syringe is to cure it if it's sick, the rubber duck is to clean it, and the Pac-Man looking thing is to discipline it. I decided to feed a rice ball to my Tamagotchi which gave it two additional power points and increased its hunger meter. On the next turn I figured hey, why not feed my Tamagotchi again? The hunger meter's only at one after all. I tossed it a tasty carrot when something tragic happened. The green one kicked mine out of the way and stole the carrot. Dude, that's so evil. How's my Tamagotchi supposed to grow big and strong? Like, come on. Well, I was doing pretty horrible in the game, but things can turn around here on the next turn. I landed on the best space, the mini game space. A roulette thing is played to select the game to be played. It doesn't let you practice the game like Mario Party does, and since I can't read the text, I had to just guess how to play right away. This first one is kind of a reaction test where you press the A button when they yell. If you go too early, you get knocked out for that round. First to three points wins. My reflexes are generally pretty solid and I crushed it once I knew what I needed to do. I gained five power points for winning the game and it put my Tamagotchi's mood gauge to the max. Winning mini games gives you a huge advantage. I went to feed my Tamagotchi a lollipop and that stupid green one tried to steal it again. This time it failed, thank God. I wish there was a way to teach your Tamagotchi to fight so I could teach that guy a lesson. The green player ended up being the first to reach a transformation. This happens when you completely fill up the power meter. Of course, they got there by playing dirty, but hey, I guess it's a legit strat. Whoever reaches the final transformation first wins the game, and each level of transforming takes successively more power points. I transformed immediately after green though, so I was doing pretty well. It wasn't just me being picked on either. Poor Red was just trying to chomp on some meat when green tried to steal that too. This guy needs to get kicked out of the game. Before I knew it, we were in another mini game. We're all on a beach with a rope and it just throws me in. Luckily, I figured this one out quick too. We're all trying to pull some sort of heavy object past a line. The way you do it is hold the A button to charge the pull meter as high as possible, but not for too long. I destroyed the other players and got another free five power points. So another mechanic of the game is cards. If you land on a card space, you're assigned a random one. I received the Go card. 
This warps the player to the ghost base, which is where we all started from. When you pass here, you receive free power points along with care points. I guess I haven't talked about those yet. So the number on your Tamagotchi machine is the amount of care points you have. Every action like feeding, playing, disciplining, and all that costs care points. If you don't have enough, well, then tough luck, I guess. On this same turn, I tried feeding it like usual. However, my Tamagotchi decided it wasn't going to eat, despite being quite hungry. Well, this is where discipline comes in. Sometimes you just gotta, uh, you know, whack it with a flying boxing glove. Hey, the 90s were a different time, okay? Then we had another new minigame. This one has all the Tamagotchis jumping around an N64 controller rapidly. When they stop, they'll either be on one of the A, B, or C buttons, or the D-pad. You've gotta press your corresponding button faster than the other players, but also make sure you press the right one. It was confusing because it said green had the most points, but yellow was awarded the power points after the game. I don't know if I just misunderstood or if it's bugged or what. Man, I was doing so well power points wise, but my Tamagotchi just wouldn't eat for some reason. I don't think you have any control over when this happens. Well, only one thing I can do. Once again, green tried to steal food from red. Like, literally no one likes this player. Apparently this game has a problem with one of the computer players just being absolutely way too lucky. I guess green was my computer this time around. Another space to land on is the accident space. This causes a random hazard to occur with your Tamagotchi. If you avoid it, you gain power points, but if you fail, well, you can see I lost power points here. Man, that's so unlucky. The blade hitting it caused it to poop on the ground. This is something you need to deal with immediately with the rubber ducky. If you let it get too dirty, then it can become very sick. Maybe now it'll eat something that it cleared up the old intestines. The fourth minigame came up soon after. This time we had to shoot clouds flying by. Hitting one gives a point, while hitting a bomb loses a point. There's also a superhero or something like that that flies by, but good luck hitting it, it's so fast. There's actually way too many bombs, and they're the lowest thing on the screen. When the game ended, everyone had zero points except me because it's just hard to avoid those bombs. Man, still even after pooping, my Tamagotchi just wouldn't eat. Well, now I had brought the discipline meter to the max. I mean, there's nothing else I can do, right? It's gotta eat, or I'm gonna lose for sure. In another display of rigged gameplay, Green landed on the fridge space. This causes the fridge to come to you and feed you a massive meal. Essentially, your hunger meter gets maxed out for free instantly. I really needed that. On the next turn, I landed on another new space, the horror space. Here, there are three doors to choose from. You have to just pick one at random, so it's pure luck. It's very likely that there's just a bunch of spooky monsters behind it, and it decreases your mood. But you can get lucky and get fed, have your illness cured, or have your poop cleaned up. Despite getting the scary monster door, my Tamagotchi did finally eat on this turn. I think it was scared of me or something, I don't know. On my next turn, I reached the second transformation, and I was the first player to do so. This gave my Tamagotchi a weird looking duck bill type thing. At least, that's what I think it looks like. I also used a new card on this turn that allows me to put a player of my choice to sleep. Obviously, I picked green, cause he's cheating, like come on, everybody knows it. Immediately after this, red showed the dangers of not cleaning up their poop. The poor living conditions caused it to become sick, and the dice roll becomes limited to 1 through 3. Next turn, the yellow player landed on a shop space. Here you can trade your care points for items that increase your mood. I think these are usually always a good deal, since it costs 3 care points to play with your Tamagotchi anyway. Speaking of playing, I finally did it for the first time like 40 minutes into the game. There's all these silly little games you play, and they're all luck. In the one we did here, I had to choose whether my Tamagotchi would look left or right. If I get it correct, it gains power points. Playing increases your mood level regardless though. With green cheating so much, I had to even the playing field. I got a new card that let me steal 10 care points from another player. And you already know I use that on green without a second thought. Next, I landed on a fitness space. This puts the Tamagotchi on a treadmill above a pool. You mash the A button to run and the treadmill gradually speeds up. The more levels you clear, the more your mood level increases. So remember how green was the villain of this game and everyone hated them? Well, in many reality TV type shows, everyone eventually goes through a villain arc, right? So Yellow landed on the PHS space, which allowed it to call one of the other Tamagotchis over as their friend. 
I was chosen, so I was instantly warped to Yellow's location so we could hang out together. You know, that's real thoughtful. I appreciate that. Well, Yellow decided to eat a nice rice ball, minding its own business, you know, and it just looks so tasty, so, uh, yeah, I kind of stole it. Hey, look, it's a tough world out there. Survival of the fittest. I'm trying to beat the game. After revealing my true colors, may as well play a new minigame. This one has you on a 4x4 grid of tiles with different images on them. The professor will reveal a picture at the top, and you have to press the A button on the tile with the matching picture. This one's just such chaos, and it's really, really imbalanced. Like, if the picture is in the bottom right, I'm just screwed. Still, though, I somehow tied with yellow on this one. Right after that, I landed on a gold meal space. There's also a gold play space. These give you triple the power points if you eat or play on them, respectively. The RNG was finally turning around. Real quick, I'll talk about the graphics and music of the game. I thought the music and sounds were just kinda decent. They're very cartoony sounding, which it does fit this style of game pretty well, but I don't know. I just wasn't that into it. The graphics are obviously very cartoony looking, and I think they look alright, but it's certainly dated. So a few turns later, I had earned enough power points to transform for the third time. Now my Tamagotchi had legs and arms, and even hair. I only needed to fill the meter up one more time to win it all. During play, the Tamagotchis will do various random things in the screen above. It doesn't affect gameplay at all, and I hadn't really paid attention to it up to this point. But now my Tamagotchi was wearing like a detective outfit or something like that. I really wonder how many of those different animations they put in the game. Things were going great. I was at the final transformation level, my hunger and mood meters were maxed out, and my care points were even maxed out. I felt unstoppable. May as well play a new minigame, right? This is the drill game, and it's a nightmare. You just have to spin the joystick as fast as possible to dig down to the water first. If you've played the original Mario Party, you'd know why this is a horrible, horrible idea. Even using palm strats, I still struggled to beat the computer in this one. Despite me keeping on top of cleaning the poop, I somehow still managed to get sick. Hey, nothing a quick injection of this something can't fix, right? Another new minigame now. Did you know there's only a total of 10 in the entire game? I think that's far too little for a game like this. Anyway, this one just had us jumping around boxes while stuff flies all over the screen. There's food and some other pleasant items, and then there's bad items like bottles or poop. Eating the good items gives you a point, and eating the bad ones makes you lose a point. The computer's incredibly bad at this one. It's strange because some of the games they're insane at, and others it's so easy to beat them. By this point, the match was actually becoming really, really close. Green had completely fallen off, and now Yellow was ahead of me. Honestly, I guess I kind of deserve it for stealing their food earlier. We had the digging game come up, and I had to sacrifice the skin on my palm, and some of my joystick's longevity, but I did win. Those power points were extremely crucial. Immediately after that, I landed on another golden food space. This was what I needed to win. Just have to eat this rice ball, and oh my god, Green stole it! I hate that guy so much! But on the next turn, Green had a redemption arc. It had a card that could steal power points from another player, and I thought for sure I was going to be chosen. But, to my surprise, it was Yellow. Dude, this was the break I needed. Yellow then landed on the casino space. Here, you can bet your care points to earn power points. Thankfully, the machine wasn't rigged, so I did not lose here. I then landed on a chance space, and of course, my guy got whacked by the lead weight or whatever. Dude, the game was trying to force me to lose at the very, very end. And then finally, it all came to a climax. I had received the ultimate card, allowing me to steal 10 power points from any player I want. Gee, I wonder who I'll pick. Oh, how about yellow? That seems like a good idea. With the final power meter maxed out, I just had to wait till my next turn. When it came around, I was congratulated on my victory and a bunch of confetti went everywhere. When the game ends, it shows a really lengthy cutscene. First, we're all on the podium with everyone except me being real sad. Then we go to the lab and they're freaking out that I'm undergoing the final transformation. Somehow my Tamagotchi turned into a kangaroo. You know, I'm not super familiar with these things, I guess. I don't remember them resembling animals at all. The girl's freaking out about how cute it is, and Dr. Bonzo just wants his Tamagotchi house to make him rich. 
Then it shows us getting beamed up into the spaceship with all the other Tamagotchis, and we go back to our home, wherever that is. Finally, it shows an egg that was left behind by our Tamagotchi. Apparently, you can save it to the game and then use it in future matches. I couldn't really figure out how to get it to work, though. There's only one map to play on, and there's not much else to the game, so that's about it. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating 64 de Hakane Tamagotchi Mina de Tamagotchi World. I thought this was pretty decent for what it is. It's another game that suffers from not having an English release, so I struggled to get into it. However, knowing this was the precursor to Mario Party makes me really appreciate the changes that were made before that came out. So many of the minigames were just horribly balanced, and only having one map, it's just pretty lacking. Along with that, there's only 10 minigames in total. If you're into Tamagotchi, I could see the taking care of it part of the game being kinda neat, but I don't know, it's just kind of an annoying side thing to me. Seeing this and looking at Mario Party, it just makes me realize how much this game would need to improve. I wonder how I would perceive it if Mario Party never existed, though. I gave it a 3.5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 1 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. 298 games on the list? Could be anything. Could be another Japanese game. 3, 2, 1, go! 212! What is that? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> we are playing Pro Mahjong Kiwame 64. The RNG has decided, chat. Nothing we can do about it. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.